Hey there. My name is Sun God. When you first jump into a new game of Ark, what is the very first thing that you usually do? Do you run up to a tree and start punching? Do you immediately start picking berries for food? Or do you run around to get the lay of the land? Getting a good start in Ark can be tricky and it's easy to get overwhelmed. You've got to endure the elements. You've got to find edible food. You need an endless water supply. And if that wasn't enough, Plenty of angry dinosaurs would love to have you for dinner. With all these obstacles, how do you even get started? In this video, I'll share with you a simple strategy to help you stay focused and get the great start and arc that you deserve. So let's get into it. Yeah! Rule number one is don't get eaten. The moment your character spawns in the world is gonna be the weakest your character will ever be. You'll never have fewer hit points or fewer things to protect yourself. So pick a spawn location that will give you breathing room to get established. And that's a beach. While nowhere is truly safe, beaches or areas close to shore and temperate zones are usually the best to start in. They may not be rich in resources, but they provide all of the basics you'll need for your first few days. But be warned, while the beach can be pretty, always keep your eyes open for wandering carnivores. By always staying a little paranoid and considering yourself always vulnerable, you increase your chance of survival. Take special care when you venture inland, as the further in you go, the risk usually goes up too. Ark may be a game about dinosaurs, but it's equally a game about crafting and building. To do that efficiently, you absolutely need tools and weapons. Need wood to build? You need a hatchet. Need metal for a rifle? You need a pick. Want to tame a dinosaur? You need a bow and arrows. There are a number of tools and weapons, but you're gonna start with the most basic kind, those made from stone. When you spawn, immediately start to gather materials. You'll need to start with a stone pick. Use your hands to gather one stone from the ground or the beach. Punch a tree with your fist to get one wood and 10 thatch. Then craft your stone pick, easy. Next is the stone hatchet and then the flint spear. Use your new pick on a boulder to collect three flint. Then use your pick on a tree, get another nine wood and 10 thatch. Use your hands to gather 12 more fiber from plants and you've got enough materials to craft the stone hatchet and the flint spear. One thing though, crafting these tools requires that you've already learned the skill ingrams for each. So even if you have the needed resources, you may not have reached the level required to learn the skill ingram to make it. If this happens, don't worry. Just keep harvesting until you level up, which is pretty easy to do in the early game. This brings us to another harsh reality of Ark. Extremely cold nights and daytime heat waves are just as deadly as any attacking raptor. So once you've got your first tools and weapons made, you need to get busy protecting yourself from extreme temperatures. The easiest way to deal with the cold is to build a campfire. Using just a handful of basic resources, you'll create a valuable source of heat for those cold nights. So if that snowflake icon appears warning you that you're cold, snuggle up to your fire and keep warm. Otherwise, you'll lose health and eventually die. But be mindful, not even a campfire will keep predators away, so keep that spear handy. This brings us to clothing. A campfire is a great source of heat, but you have to stay next to it to experience its benefit. Clothes, however, travel with you and provide a degree of constant protection against cold and attacks. For beginners, a set of clothes will give you the most basic protection. Crafting them is quick and easy. For just 100 fiber, you can make a cloth shirt, pants, and a hat. I urge you just to craft those three things on your first day and then get cracking on other survival basics. Don't waste your time on your first day spear hunting dodos for the 10 leather required to make cloth gloves and cloth boots. That wastes valuable time, could lead you into the path of aggressive dinos, and for all the work involved, it won't get you that much more meaningful protection. So just skip the glove and the boots for the first day and just make them later. Eventually, you can craft a hide armor set which provides better protection from cold and attacks. You'll need another 82 hide for those, plus higher level ingrams you won't have earned yet, so make leather hunting a focus for a future day. Maybe you thought that collecting food should be the very first thing you do when you spawn, but the reality is they're usually not gonna need food for a day or two. And when you do need it, Collecting berries will be pretty easy. It's easy in the early game to survive on berry alone, but as you get into the higher levels and increase your health, you're gonna need meat or fish. 
After you craft a flint spear or stone hatchet, it's easy to kill dodos, fish, or other passive dinos and cook up their meat in a campfire. Cooked meat will be your staple food for some time to come, at least until you can make complex food recipes in the cooking pot later. Be sure to keep a handy supply of cooked meat around and you'll do just fine. The Ark is huge, and by now, you're probably itching to get your own dino and go exploring. But once you've got your stone tools and clothes, you should instead build a simple thatch hut. Consider this your temporary survival shelter that's quick to build and painless to abandon later. This will provide you some protection from extreme temperatures and aggressive dinos until you find a better location for your dream base. The easiest shelter requires just one thatch foundation, four thatch walls, and one thatch ceiling, and ideally a campfire for heat at night. You really don't need anything fancy, just four walls to hide in and heat. Optionally, you can replace one of the walls with a thatch door frame and door, but only if you've learned the required ingrams and have the needed materials. Build your survival shelter near water and trees. You'll need the water to drink and the trees for fire and crafting. As a rule of thumb, if there are dodos wandering around, it's probably a safe-ish spot. If you notice it's getting cold and dark and you don't have what it takes to build a shelter, just huddle between some large boulders and drop a campfire for the night. Depending how much you like the site, you can expand your base here and make it permanent or abandon it later for a better location. One of the biggest mistakes I make early in the game is not crafting and placing a sleeping bag as quickly as possible. The sleeping bag will let you respawn near your shelter and save you the misery of spawning far away and having to find your way back to it. Sleeping bags are a one-time use item, so play it safe until you're able to craft a bed, which is infinitely reusable. My advice is you place two beds next to each other so that if you die quickly twice in a row, you can respawn at the other bed and not have to wait for the cooldown timer to expire and risk losing your corpse and everything inside it. With so many dinos to choose from, what's the best one to start with? In the early game, until you're able to craft narcotics and tranquilizer arrows, your options are pretty limited. Your first ideal tame is a Moshops. It doesn't require narcotics to tame, it doesn't require crafting a saddle to ride, and it only requires berries as food. It's great at harvesting berries, and while it's a bit slow, it's a surprisingly good swimmer. Plus, as it levels up, you can get harvesting bonuses that become very useful later on, and that helps with collecting rare flowers, rare mushrooms, prime meat, tree sap, and more. Many might think that the Parasaur is their first obvious choice, and it makes sense why you might think that. Parasaurs can move faster than most shops, carry more weight, and they collect berries as well. They can also act as a turret and sound an alarm when enemies are near. But to craft a saddle to ride a Parasaur, you need to have 80 leather and be level 9, and learn the Parasaur saddle ingram. Usually it takes a few days to get there, but when you do, definitely tame a Parasaur. It'll make getting around and carrying heavier loads much easier. But what about the lowly dodo, you ask? Why not tame it first? Well, dodos don't really give you an early game advantage. However, their eggs will be a critical ingredient for crafting kibble to help speed up tame times later on, such as for the Parasaur. They're an easy tame, so pick up a male and female couple sometime over your first few days. The lowly Lystrosaurus is an often underappreciated dino, but its long-term benefit is helping your other nearby dinos level up much faster. Always grab one of these early and pet them often. There are other early game tames that can help you too. Dilophosaurs can be good companions when hunting meat and leather, and they don't require a saddle. Raptors are the next logical step up from Dilos, as they are fast, meaner hunters, and you can craft a saddle at level 18. Your first game-changing tame will be a Pteranodon. With one of these, you can fly over dangerous areas, reach the top of mountains, and travel deep into the map instead of hugging the safer coasts. They're a tricky tame, as you need to down them with a trank arrow in a safe spot on land. And crafting a saddle for one has really steep requirements. 230 hide, 125 fiber, 75 kite or keratin, and you have to be level 38. It's a tough slog to get the resources, but once you tame a Pteranodon and craft its saddle, everything will change for you. Skill up its stamina first, and then its weight. They can't carry much, but they'll be invaluable helping you get to hard to reach metal, obsidian, and crystal in the early game. If you think the Pteranodon will shake up your game, the Argentavis will rock your world. 
These are mid-game tanks, and while tricky to knock out and even harder to craft a saddle for, their stamina and weight allowance immediately make them your workhorse for travel, transportation, taming, and harvesting. An RG that's sufficiently leveled up can carry hundreds or even thousands of units of metal. They are that good. But you need to be a level 62 in order to craft an RG saddle, collect 350 hide, 185 fiber, and 150 chitin or carrot. That is a steep hill to climb, but it is totally worth it. You'll notice I focus mostly on land dinos first and flyers second. But water tams like the Ichthyosaurus and the Megalodon can be very helpful in their own way. The Ichthyosaurus is a passive tame using only fish and it can travel through water very quickly. The Megalodon is your first real water-based tank, and it is awesome for hunting fish meat and prime fish meat. Okay, so I spent a lot of time talking about what to build, craft, and tame, but what about skills? What is best to improve first? Ultimately, your preference may depend on your play style, but here's what I suggest. First, focus on fortitude. It helps you tolerate the elements a bit better, and you should hit about level four the first day. This will help you better survive the cold nights and hot days until you get better clothes. Next, tackle melee. The higher this is, the faster you'll collect resources for your hut, clothes, tools, saddles, taming, and food. And the more wood, thatch, and fiber you harvest because you have higher melee, the more you can build and the faster you can accrue experience, which you can use to level up melee faster. It's a virtuous cycle. After fortitude, I focus on reaching 150 melee as quickly as possible before I increase my other skills. By focusing purely on melee and building, you'll be shocked at how fast you can level. And by using this method, you can very quickly get to the higher levels you'll need for the Raptor and Pteranodon saddles. And lastly, weight. I wouldn't put too many points into this early unless you have no tamed dinos to haul heavy loads for you. Weight can be helpful when you have to carry heavy loads over a distance, but try using your dinos to do that for you instead. That way, you can focus on fortitude and melee first and then put points towards wait later. All right, this is a lot of talk about things to do. And I get that there's plenty of stuff that I've skipped over because if I didn't, this video would last forever. But realistically, when can you get all of this done? Well, a lot of it can be done pretty quickly. Here's how my first days in a new game usually go. Day one, find a safe place to set up your first campfire and basic thatch shelter. Coast can be a good bet, but be careful. Some coast can be extremely dangerous. You'll know it when you see it. Craft a stone hatchet, stone pick, and flint spear. You can make a cloth shirt, pants, and a hat. They'll help you stay warm at night. Focus on increasing your fortitude first, then melee skills. Find a spot for your thatch survival shelter and start building before it gets dark. And drop a campfire for warmer. On day two, finish building your thatch survival shelter. If you started with a one by one square, expand it to four by four. You're gonna need the room to store all the things that you're collecting. Keep focusing on leveling up melee, especially as you expand your shelter. Tame a most shops if you can find one. It'll help you get around and carry resources. Craft a bow and arrows, and don't waste time taming dodos. Hunt the dodos and other passive dinos for me. Now you can gather enough berries to sustain you for a couple of days. And craft and place a bedroll, or ideally a bed. This step is essential to help you safely respawn back at your hut if you die. Day three. Start looking for and collecting rocks, metal, and wood. You'll need more of these for a forge, workbench, and other recipes. Craft a mortar and pestle, and start making narcotics for trank arrows. If you have a parasaur by now, craft a saddle and use it to carry more harvested materials faster and further than you can on your own. On day four, keep your eyes open for lystrosaurs to help your new tames level up faster when they're nearby. Start collecting resources for a raft. This will help you range up and down the coasts without having to worry about aggressive wandering dinos. If you haven't by now, work on a cooler bin, smithy, and a forge. It'll take time to get them all, but all of them are critical for making your next big advancements. So from day five and onwards, things tend to get a little bit more fluid. Roundabout now, start thinking about taming a Tronodon and crafting a saddle scattered around a little bit inland. If you haven't found metal yet, use your Tronodon to scan mountain ranges below the snow line. Start saving up materials for that Argentava saddle. It is a really hard goal to achieve, and you may not get there for some time, but you'll be 
really glad when you've done it. So, that's a lot, right? Believe me, this video could go on forever. There is so much more to ARC, and different people have different strategies. But this is, more or less, how I approach each new game of ARC. If you think I've missed something, and I'm certain that I have, please let me know in the comments what you think are the most critical steps in an early game. I would love to hear your thoughts. I hope this was helpful for you and helps you get off to a better start. Thanks for listening. Take care.